Hello friends and a warm welcome to the Slow Living Collective. This is a podcast about slowing down, living seasonally and embracing an intentional life. So introductions. I'm Amy. I'm a 30-something mum of two, homemaker, home educator and allotment gardener. And these podcasts are love notes from me, sharing the things that I sometimes need to hear myself as well. In these episodes, I'm going to delve into what it means to walk a different path, to stepping outside societal norms and embracing all the beauty that it provides. From educating our children outside of the school system, living in a small home by choice, surrounding ourselves with a life of intention instead of living a life by default. I welcome you to come on this journey with me and open your mind to maybe a different way of living. I hope you find what you're looking for within the words of these podcasts and I hope they speak to you in your own unique way. Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Slow Living Collective. Today I want to celebrate and share with you all about our first year on our allotment plot, tell you the story about why we decided to get an allotment and some of the things we've grown and why it's just such a wonderful space for us. It's funny because prior to the pandemic, I don't really think I ever thought about having an allotment. And like I've said in previous podcasts, particularly when I talk about slow and simple living, the pandemic reframed a lot in my mind and our mind as like a family unit and how we live and grow in this world I guess and it it came to my mind in 2020 obviously we spent a lot of the year isolated locked down a lot of the year at home and we live in a flat we live in a split level flat I think I've mentioned that probably multiple times before We live in a split level flat and although we do have outside space, we have a good sized balcony and we have done amazing things on our balcony. It has been a garden, it has been our growing space, it has been our play space. The pandemic really brought home, you know, the space we had. We were incredibly grateful for our balcony and we spent a lot of time out there. And again, last year, throughout the early months of my son being born and being a baby and not wanting to stray too far from home, that was a wonderful space for us as well. It was around October 2020 when I started to think about having an allotment and what a wonderful space that would be for us, the adults in our family, to grow our own food and be less reliant on you know, what is available locally. We use the supermarket to some extent, we also use the farm shop and we like to live in this seasonal pattern. We like to eat seasonally, the things that are in season. We live in a world now where we can, you know, fly in our strawberries from from anywhere and that comes with a hefty carbon footprint. And so we wanted to live more seasonally anyway and we try and do that with the things that are available, even if we're purchasing at a supermarket we find out what's actually in season and therefore you're more likely to get something that hasn't got this huge footprint attached to it. There's a lot to be said about trying to live seasonally and have like less of this footprint when it comes to our food, certainly for us. And, you know, the idea of being able to grow some of our food as well, while, you know, we would... uh, be away from you know far away from being self-sufficient it is something that we want to work towards and grow towards so suddenly an allotment became this sort of very attractive idea and I put myself down on the list this was October 2020 and I was very early pregnant with my son at the time and you know I didn't know how long it would take for these for for the it to come up on the list I'd heard you know, horror stories about in some areas, the list to get an allotment is like around 10 years. And I was thinking, oh goodness, <laughs> like I really hope that that's not going to be the case here. But, you know, I put myself down on the list because, you know, as soon as I put myself down on the list, at least I was on the list. And then, you know, I was just sort of mildly hopeful that it wouldn't take too long. 
what we did find was that we were incredibly lucky because one day in October 2021, just a year after we went on the list, I received a letter from the local council addressed to me. And so I, you know, I picked it up off the mat and I was like, why are the council writing to me? Uh, anyway, pulled the letter open and there it was. I had been offered the chance for an allotment. I responded immediately, booked in that appointment to go and see the the plot that was on offer. And actually, in the time it took between, I think it was like just a few days, probably about less than a week, I know that, I actually walked past the allotment to see, you know, because the plot was actually very visible from the front gate. And, you know, I sort of looked through and, you know, had some of these ideas on what it would be like. So it was the next week we went to see the plot. We met up with a guy from the council and he actually said another plot had become available. And so it was up to me. I could decide which plot I wanted. So there was this one at the front, which was the original plot that was on offer. It was a square plot. It was very overgrown, lots of like fruit bushes and such. Um, definitely a big job in if you, you know, I I would have wanted to sort of level it and, you know, build it from the ground up it was very very overgrown and then there was this other plot which was more narrow but it had a lot of stuff had already been grown on it the actual person who had had the allotment prior to myself according to my fellow plot holders hadn't actually been there that long so and I don't know who was there prior to that and they didn't really see this person very much so this narrow plot, it had quite a lot of stuff in it already. It wasn't laid out how I would have laid it out, but it was a lot more manageable considering I had not even a six month old at the time. So I thought, you know, we will, I, I was very much leaning towards that one. It was also sort of away from the front of the plot. It was a bit more quiet and a bit more I quiet I mean allotments are not loud but it was just a little bit more isolated and I liked that it was sort of you know a little bit out the way I can go there and you know I cannot see anybody the whole time I'm there sometimes and so I accepted we we paid for our plot and um, yeah that was that so we got the key in late October I think it was and we immediately had some ideas on what we wanted to do with the plot. Uh, we had two very small children at the time. Like I said, my son was only six months old and my daughter was not even three. So two very small children. My biggest concern was that being there, I needed them to be safe. And I also needed them not to be running on other people's plots. You know, people work very hard on their allotments and I wanted to be um you know I wanted to be mindful that while we're there and you know we deserve the space as much as anybody else my children deserve to be there as much as anyone else I want to make sure that we're safe we're on our plot and you know other plots are not being run over by my children and obviously you know that's part of their learning that you know we don't do that but also, I needed to make sure at the time that they were safe. So one of the first things that we did was install a small fence, and that was at an additional cost to ourselves, obviously. Lots of people gather stuff for free or like a low price, getting things through marketplace and things, and we have utilised that, which I'll go on to in a minute. But yeah, most of the time we have... Um, purchase things second hand or, or been able to pick things up for free but in this instance we just actually paid for the kind of fence that we want and it wasn't the cheapest <laughs> um, but it was a small um, like a PVC fence it goes around the entirety of our plot we made like a little gate in it and it's high enough that we can actually step over it but also high enough <laughs> that we can keep the children you know they can't get through it and they're safe the plot's huge um, our plot is really long and it's a really good size the kids love running around and digging in the dirt and 
we have even more plans for next year on you know making it a more of a a kid friendly space but it's a work in progress as these things are so we installed that fence and then once that was done we were able to get to work on some more of the plot things because it's it's difficult when you're like I had my my son my my six month old he you know had him wearing him on my back and then you know chasing after a two-year-old I once that fence was up it was a safe space I could easily keep my eye on my daughter and, and she could have that freedom and I wasn't always yelling come here do this do that and yeah it was just nice to have that sort of sort of safety net so once we'd installed the fence we found that everything else sort of like just naturally came to us so the first thing we wanted to do was move our compost heap now there was a double compost heap it wasn't very well utilized and it was made from pallets and we decided that to effectively be able to plan our plot how we wanted it we would need to move the compost heap to the far end um, so that took quite a few days we obviously had to reduce the piles of compost and then be able to move the structure and replace it and then after that then put the compost back in. It wasn't the most effective way of composting, it still isn't the most effective way of composting and it's something that is actually in our plans for this coming winter which I'm going to talk about in a bit. So. We moved the compost heap and from there we were able to then quite quickly, using some string as a guide, we were able to sort of lay out and mark out how we were going to do our beds. And I am denied about whether to do raised beds or actually in-ground beds and I went for in-ground beds because that's what had previously been there and the guy before us had seemingly been <laughs> incredibly successful so I was fairly confident that you know the soil was good enough and um, something within my gardening is I try and practice organic gardening as much as possible I actually haven't used anything anything at all other than planting my seeds and plants directly into the ground and watering them. I haven't used any feed, um, I certainly don't use any chemicals and so I want things to be as natural as possible and I know for the first couple of years it's going to be like trial and error, figuring out what works, what doesn't work, making sure we have a rotation going and so we have a number of beds, I think we have seven beds um, of decent size, they're about three meters long each, we have about Six, yeah, six or seven beds, I can't really remember. And then we have one really long bed along the side that runs the entirety of the plot. And uh, yeah, it, I really, really like it. I really like how it's turned out. And we were able to pick up some free slabs. I say we, my husband picked up some free slabs from Facebook Marketplace. And that was, we were able then to sort of lay somewhat of a path so when it gets, you know, particularly muddy and stuff we have something that's isn't just not going to become squelchy mud and so we were able to do that and we've laid a lot of uh, path it's just like stepping stone kind of thing just something for us to stand on for the kids to stand on and we haven't quite got quite enough that we've managed to do all the way between the beds as well like because we've got like bed pathway bed pathway and so you know maybe in the spring when more hopefully some more slabs come up we can you know grab them and finish off the path after we had done the fencing I was very keen to sort of I guess you know repurpose or uh, recycle a lot of stuff as much as possible now Obviously, we pay, like I said, we paid for the fence, we got the slabs for free, and uh, we had like a lot of things like the bamboo canes there already. I have purchased some just to be able to do some things I wanted. My granddad gave me some netting, so I was able to do some stuff with that. I was able to create uh, like a brassica cage out of some netting and like the fine mesh netting. 
and some bamboo canes. That's something that I plan to sort of, as time goes on, get better at doing and better at creating. And yeah, it's been a good year. We have grown parsnips. They did really well, better than I expected because a lot of people told me that parsnips were quite hard to grow. But when I did the beds, I, you know, I I did dig them over at first. I intend to go to no dig at some point. Um, but I'm just figuring myself out at the moment and I'm not diving in with too many different things. So I did dig the beds and I might do no dig on a couple of beds over this coming winter and um, that is something that I'm thinking about so that's something I've got I've been collecting a lot of cardboard so it's something that I really sort of need to get my finger out and think about maybe by the time this podcast airs I will have done that <laughs> and yeah so uh, I did dig over the beds I did sieve the beds Um, because there was a lot of stone so I did sieve and we've grown really well actually and I I know digging can like alter the structure and composition of the soil so no dig is something that I do want to progress to but I'm not uh, you know forcing myself to do too much too quickly and anyway so we did the parsnips, they grew really well and we've, um, we've eat, we haven't eaten any of those yet. We've actually put them away and we've frozen them ahead of winter. So that's something that, you know, because parsnips are in season at the moment. So I like to you know save some of these things for when they're not in season. So we have a, a chest freezer, a small chest freezer because we live in a small home. But having an additional freezer was something that we felt was a purchase that would be really worthwhile to us so we grew parsnips we grew radishes we have we inherited a couple of rhubarb plants and I also bought an additional one and so they have been going well this year we also grew early peas and main crop peas we grew carrots they did okay not brilliant and I have done beetroot, which has been incredible. Uh, I really enjoy ground beetroot. So we had beetroot, that was incredible. We also um, have grown leeks. They have been fun to watch. I grew some corn. I didn't get many because they didn't germinate that well. We grew a lot of salad crop, like lots of different kinds of lettuce. We did... Uh, lots of tomatoes, the tomatoes were amazing, we had a really really good season with tomatoes, we also did, we've done, we've still got brussels, cabbages and broccoli, we also did, we did two different types of uh, cabbage, so we have autumn king which are still thriving and we did savoy cabbage and we picked those and got them we actually had some savoy cabbage in our dinner yesterday and so we've put a lot of it in the freezer and that's one of the benefits obviously of having the additional freezer space and we have done french beans and runner beans my runner beans did absolutely nothing still growing a pumpkin and we've got raspberry bushes and gooseberry bush so yeah we have had we really threw ourselves into it and I would say our first year has been a lot of just learning and figuring out what we like what we don't like what grows what maybe was a bit more difficult and I've got some really good ideas for the coming season so the whole point of this podcast today is to celebrate my first year on the plot because I am about to renew I believe that the like the renewals come out this week so that's coming up and you know hopefully by the time this airs <laughs> I will be re- diving into my second year on the plot so something else we also did in the last year was we got a shed our plot didn't have a shed we were able to get a free shed I did pay to get it to us in terms it was local but we have a micro we have one car between us and we have a micro there was no way on this earth that we were going to get pieces of shed into our car ever 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 so the shed was a six by four 
we didn't really want to take the time where my, you know, my husband has to take the time off work to, you know, hire a van to go and pick this up. And so we just hired a man with a van. You know, it would have been around the same cost anyway. So, uh, but, you know, much cheaper than getting a shed. So we were able to get that. We have a small storage shed. It's my goal to have a greenhouse. I think I'm just going to get one of those plastic ones. Now I know you've got to be careful with them. I have had the two plastic ones on my balcony, which a bit of a different environment. But, I, you know, I just don't want anything more at this point. If something came up that was, you know, glass or, so, or something like that, then you know maybe I'd think about it. But at the moment, I'm thinking of purchasing something, and uh, I've got some ideas on how to sturdy, I guess. So ahead of the next year, we have some plans. Like I said, this year was really about finding our feet and figuring out what we want to grow and what we don't want to grow. And so. I thought I would share some of the things that I've learned that I really love growing and the things that I not so much. <laughs> so I'm going to keep my rhubarb plants. I'm not a great lover of rhubarb, but I have found some recipes in which I can sort of integrate it and I do like it a bit more. And uh, I think it's a great crop to grow on the allotment. I also want to do more pumpkins. I may buy some more raspberry canes and... I think I'm going to leave the, the the gooseberries as they are. I would, I'm not going to grow runner beans next year. I want to do cucumbers. I did try and grow cucumbers and they weren't very successful this year. And I've grown on my balcony for many years. And um, cucumbers are just not my plant. So I'm continuing to tackle them. Then I'm not going to grow radishes. I don't love radishes. They're very easy to grow and I had a huge, huge crop, but I don't like them. And so, yeah, I would, I'm not going to bother with those. I'm going to do parsnips again. I'm going to do carrots again. I'm definitely going to do peas again. Um, oh, I didn't mention earlier, but I did potatoes as well. And I want to do a lot more potatoes. We had a good crop of potatoes, but I would like to do more. And... Uh, I'm going to do beetroot and leeks again. They've worked really well. I want to do lots of tomatoes again, lots of lettuce, salady type things. I want to do um, brassicas again, so like cabbages, Brussels sprouts, broccoli. I would quite like to do, I don't think I'm going to do French beans again. Um, they were fine, but I just don't think I'm going to do them. I really. I quite like growing them, but yeah, I just don't think I'm going to do them. I'd love to do more corn. I would like to have quite a lot of corn. I also think I'm probably, I don't know if there's anything that I didn't grow this year that I'd like to try, maybe. Um, but those are the sort of things that I'm thinking. Another big thing I want to do this year is redo the compost now the compost like I said was like one of our first tasks and it's worked for the season but it hasn't really worked we really want to move into really making a lot of our own compost and just having this sort of like constant cycle where you know we're able to compost it down and you know that we're not if we don't have to buy compost that would be wonderful now you may or may not know peat free compost has been phased out and I'm not I've not heard great things I did okay with my compost this year but um, I've heard people having issues with you know some of the peat free composts I would love to really just create our own compost and have our allotment as this you know sort of constant cycle and without too much outside input like I said, I don't really, like, I haven't done like any feeds or anything, and I've had a really successful year. I don't know if that's going to be the same always, but so composting is something I'm looking at. Yeah, I'm basically looking at just different ways that I can sort of head into this new, this second year, this second season on the allotment. More composting you know, really focusing and sort of, I guess, niching down on the things I really, really 
love uh, and love to grow and you know that the allotment for us is you know not just a space where we can grow our own food that's super important to us especially with this simple seasonal living that we try and embrace as much as possible having a, our own food source is something that is really important to us and we you know we've got long-term goals homesteading would be like the dream at the moment we just doing what we can do within sort of the the remit that we have and yeah so it's it's been a wonderful wonderful first year on the plot but not just the growing of the food but just like the mental health aspect and just being outside and being able to be in the fresh air so much just feels so good we spend a lot of time outside we do something i don't know some of you may have heard of this some of you may not but we every year do a thousand hours outside and it's sort of like this initiative to try and get you to spend more time outside and you just record your hours and it's something that we personally quite enjoy and we quite enjoy tracking you know our time outside and it's mid-October when I'm recording this and we are I think like 60 or 80 hours away from hitting our thousand so and that obviously we started in January so it runs until the very end of December and so yeah we've had a wonderful time outside this year it's been epic and our first year on the plot has been wonderful I'm really excited for year two I'm really excited to see how I can improve on what I did last year and so my plan now from this sort of you know autumn time is to get the plot some sort of shape and um, I have been doing that over the recent weeks get the plot in some sort of shape and get some of that no dig stuff sorted and ready for the winter get the plot sort of tucked in I know lots of people do grow in over winter it's not my plan this year because I've got a lot of other plot things that I want to get done and change some bits up get the compost area done so I am going to bed the allotment down for winter this year and you know protect the plants that need protecting and then I'm going to work on I'm, I'm going to take a little time off I did the same last year inadvertently because I had mastitis last year but I'm going to take some time off like throughout December I think and maybe January too and then you know just stroll into the new year and I've got this list of things that I want to get done the compost I want to get done you know just think about some organizing um some stuff for the kids i want to build a raised bed for the kids i want to grow more flowers next year i didn't grow any flowers this year and i want to do a little bit of that so who knows we will see but i will of course take you along on the journey so i think that's everything just real true celebration of one year on our plot one, year one has been wonderful and i'm just looking forward to what year two may have in store thank you so much for tuning into today's episode i am beyond grateful to have you here Community is so important, so I would love to chat with you over on Instagram because Instagram is kind of my jam. You can find me over on my account, which is at lifeonplot44, and you can also find me on the dot slowliving.collective. I will link all of the links in the info, the show notes and everything, so you can see exactly where you can find me and where. My podcasting friends have always told me that podcasts live and die by their reviews. So if you're able to leave a rating or a review on this one, I would appreciate that so much. And of course, if you're able to share what I do here on your social media platforms, I would be so grateful too. In this episode, I also mentioned my podcast I do with Talia. You are welcome to come over there and join us. We talk about everything. Honestly, everything. You can find us at slow the heck down pod and you can obviously search us wherever you listen to your podcasts and our podcast is called slow the heck down 
Thank you again for tuning in and I will be back soon with another episode.